So everyone maybe want to understand a little more what exactly flamenco is, even yes. though you all live in Spain. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, because especially, Rani, I mean, do you, do you know anything about Indian music? A little bit. A little bit, because it has... This, okay, so what we're going to do is talk a little bit about how basically flamenco kind of works, I suppose, because when you see it all put together, it's quite confusing and, and, and it's actually, its basis is, is, is somewhat more simple. So what we're doing in, um, in most sort of Western music, the biggest difference between flamenco music and Western music is that most Western music is based on two rhythms, either a waltz, a kind of one, two, three, one. So, so you hear this kind of... Yeah. Okay, or it will be, or it will be based on a four-beat rhythm, so more, more like a march, which you can, which you can clap along to. Um, so, now the difference really with flamenco compared to Western music is that the its rhythmical base is much more complicated, and a lot of it is based more on uh, uh, an. Um, Indian rhythm, which in, in, in the case of flamenco, most of the basis of the rhythms are based on a circle of 12. So when you're counting, uh, you, it starts off very, very simply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just two chords. And then what they do is, of course, then you can just make you can you can add finger patterns. So you've got you've got finger patterns that go up or or back or or okay. So when you or so when you put them together, instead of going. Just count, it just counts to 10 all the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It gets more and more and more intricate and more and more and more advanced with the okay. finger work, but the essential basis underneath it is always the same. And this is something that once you get used to the idea of, of playing with those rhythms, you can start doing it in different keys, different, uh, in very much in, uh, you take that basic rhythm and you do it in a, a key that's Spanish. Again, it's, it's the same pattern that goes on and on around it. Once you get the, the feeling of that pattern, this is the reason why all the flamencos know 
when to start and stop at the same time. So when you're seeing sort of a dance group or singers or whatever, you can't, you're seeing everyone's clapping and clapping and clapping and going crazy. And then the whole thing starts and stops at the same time because everyone knows where that rhythm is going to go. And the added complication is that the dancers have a, have a language in the footsteps that tell the guitar player when they're going to start and stop. So what you have to do is you have to be very aware, where, not only when they're dancing, not what, just what they're doing, but actually listening to what the change of the rhythm is in the feet so that that will tell you then what the guitar player has to do next. Um, I think that's probably the hardest thing about flamen accompanying flamenco dancers mm -hmm. and the one thing that I didn't realize when I started playing, but that's what you had to learn to do. Um, it, so it, 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 there's sort of multiple levels. When that happens, so that means that when you've got um, a, a dancer who wants to call a dance, they will make a, a three loud three loud steps with their feet, which means that the thing is going to stop. So if, it, so if I'm playing in, for example, those sorts of, those sorts of rhythmical breaks are put in by the dancers that tell you when you're going to start and stop the actual rhythm. So, there's quite a lot going on, really. When you first start, you first have to pick up the rhythms. Then you have to pick up how the song is going to match. And then you have to pick up where the dancers are going to go. And then you can put that all together. And hopefully, if it all works out together, it should look like you know what you're actually what you're doing. Um, so let me think of another example. So for example, in the case of an allegria, we're doing all sorts of stuff here. You're keeping that 12 beat rhythm going. Um, but you're putting a lot of extra uh, uh, little melodies and, and, and finger work in here. So, for example, you'd have like a... By far too fast for my speakers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! I'll have to slow down. <laughs> I mean, the, one of the good things about the guitar as well is that the, the, the sounds that come out of it, that you get the... 
it sounds like that that you can't really get on other instruments in some ways. But what are the characters of the guitar having six strings? Is it if I play uh, a chord like this, and I just do something very, very simple, which is basically to lift my finger here and then play the same thing again. You get that Spanish sound. Which is actually musically quite complicated to explain, but in, in, in terms of what you're physically, all you're doing is you're just lifting up your finger. And this happens all the time in flamenco, that you have, you have basically um, a chord, like a chord of E, which is normal, and then what you do is that you actually just move your fingers up, which any, any four-year-old can do. You just move your fingers up like this, and you play it again, and then you move your fingers back, and you play it again. Okay? Now, actually, what you're actually doing in real life is literally teaching a, a kid to move their finger from here to here. But actually, you need a, a degree in music to explain musically what's happening in that chord. And this is one of the complicated things with flamenco is that it's not actually about it's not actually about trying to explain it from a theoretical point of view because most of the time they're doing things which are musically very complicated but actually the reason why it's complicated is because all you're doing is that you're just sticking a finger down in a place that looks natural on the instrument so uh if you play a chord of a if i put a, if i just put my finger down on here you get a different chord, which is actually, which is actually a, a much more complicated way of explaining the, the theory of the, of the chord progression. But it's only because that's just where the fingers fit on the guitar. And um, so um, I think that you, you, you start hearing this, these sorts of those nice, those nice kind of harmonies that come out just because of the nature of the instrument. Um, so let me think of another example. Like, for example, fandango is a is a is a, a is related very much to the the Malagueña. So, like for example, if you have a Malagueña, I would be doing something like. It. Okay, now that's Malagenia, but if I do it the same thing in Fandangos, you have a rhythm, it's more or less the same notes, but you get... just a sort of uh, way of yeah <laughs> uh, it's just a way of showing a comparison between the two but you can go all over the place I mean I don't really uh, I mean the, the guitars are universe and I mean just in the one form the Malagenia you've got a thousand things you can do variations in the Then tremolos. Tremolos are a really cool thing. They make the guitar sound like two instruments at once. So what I do is I play one note and then four notes above it. Another four notes. So you get something like... Thank you. 
<laughs> oh. Mark, can, so, I ask you a can I ask you a question? Of course you might. Yeah. Uh, so who, who is leading? Is it your left hand or your right hand when you're doing a, a, a mus musical sort of play? Because, uh, yeah? The right hand is doing the rhythm. And the left hand, the, the guitar is one of the only instruments where you have to play to do two different, like for example, with a piano, mm. each hand is playing a key, right? Yeah. But yeah. with the guitar, it's different, it's different because each hand has to do something different to produce yeah. a note at the same time. Okay. Mm. Um, and it's the same. So whether you want to strum a chord, whether you want to play a scale, you've got to, you've got to do there. Um, whether you want to play, whether you want to play, whatever, you've got to do it all at the same time. So, I mean, with the, one of the things that obviously in flamenco now is that you can mix things up. So I'm going to play um, uh, something that not many of you have heard before. I'm going to play Madonna for the flamenco guitar. Just to finish. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, the, the, the guitar is a universe. Flamenco is a universe. It's yeah. very, Obviously. it's trying to, trying to explain what flamenco is in 20 minutes is, is like, okay, might as well talk about the universe. It's, it's <laughs> really, it's an enormous, massive subject. And, and as you can tell, I've spent literally thousands of hours fiddling around with the instrument, you know, to I'm get sure. the, to where the point where you don't really have to think about playing it anymore. Um, it's a lifetime of work, basically, you know, and it's endless. It's still, it's still got stuff I want to do, you know. Mm. Incredible. Bravo. Incredible. Mm. Yeah. Any questions? Yep. It would take me a lifetime to even learn it. <laughs> <laughs> When's well, your next album coming out, Mark? Yeah, good question. No, I, no, no, I, no. I, wrote, I wrote it. I've written the next album yonks ago. I need to. Uh, I probably need to get a studio in my bedroom or something because I'm not going to... All the studios have closed down now as well. You know, that's another thing. It's difficult. What about, um, what about regular practice? Because uh, that I know is, a, is, a, is something which isn't necessary in order to keep... Uh, uh, keep okay, up practice. to a point, yeah. I mean, like, it, there is... I mean, certainly when you're learning to play an instrument, 
you have to have a certain amount of dedicated practice every day. I mean, and I think that the big difference, every musician has to go through a phase of their life where I would say that probably for about five years, you need to devote a minimum of five or six hours a day to learning the instrument. Wow. But then after you've gone through that, you, you have a lot of, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of muscle memory in here. I mean, I can, I can not pick up the guitar for a week and play a concert cold now. So it's not the same, it's not the same as when you're learning to play. I mean, the biggest problem I have now is memory. Um, it's, not, it's not the fingers, it's like I forget, I forget pieces because, because you know, you, you, just, you just forget things when you don't play them too well, you know? But I mean, muscle memory is a really weird thing because I mean, there's, some, there's sometimes I'm in the middle of a piece and I've played it so many times, I can't actually, I don't actually know how I'm playing it. So, I mean, like some of the Bach stuff, you just... <laughs> You know this kind of stuff you just you just end up playing it so many times you don't even know yeah. if, I, if i actually stop and think about what my fingers are doing i can't do it when you're playing and you're particularly when you're playing flamenco um, yeah how many people in your audience would be aware well hang on you've turned yourself off martin you've you've um muted yourself sorry i have Sorry, you were saying, how many people would be aware of what? If you actually um, went wrong in a piece, would they just assume you're just extemporizing? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yes. I mean, actually, what you do is that you, you, you do learn. I mean, it's, it's not so much that you, unless you actually stop altogether. Um, so long as you can carry on, you, you, can, you can fake uh, your mistakes to a degree and actually I mean all musicians do that anyway but specifically in, I mean quite often you know I'll be in a thing I'll be in a thing with the dancer say for example you lose you lose beat with what the dancers do okay so you you're, you're trying to get <laughs> Then you get lost and then and you think oh am i in time or whatever and then so i what i tend to do is if that happens i tend to go <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone thinks that's part of the act you know because it's that so so you just you just you, you just stop playing and just carry on with the rhythm and then when you get the when when you get it back again you go ah you, you know that's a sort of trick so it's not that you've gone wrong exactly. It, you've covered up what you you covered yeah. up in mistake. And so what you, you you actually end up finding that half the show is actually patching together uh, things in a way so that it all looks seamless. You know. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's just it's just the nature of it's just the nature of improvising. That's just how it works. You know. <laughs> Mark, what okay. is uh, what means uh, Malagueña when you're talking about Malagueña? Is it a style within in the flamenco world, or what is this? Absolutely, all a lot of the a lot of the different styles come from the towns they come from. So the Sevillana comes from Sevilla, the Granadina okay. comes from Granada, the Malagueña comes from Malaga. Uh, so you you find that a lot of the a lot of the um, you know the Alegría de they they actually call it this full name is the Alegría de Cadiz is from Cadiz. The Fandangos de Huelva is from Huelva, so it's like they, they most of the forms come from specific towns. There's there's a few exceptions, um, uh, but most most of them come from specific regions in Spain. And I think what happened was that the the ferriers used to travel around the countries, and pe the different musicians who were there used to pick up the different forms from the different places that they visited. I think that's how it all sort of came together. Okay, thank you, Mark. That was just absolutely, well, it was mind blowing. Um, Amazing. Uh, never mind Ralph's speakers, my video was so blurry. You looked like Superman when you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> so.